All right, hello there, THP 494 and 598, Matthew here. We've just finished looking at uh, particles, right? Particle systems, just for a hot second. And then also playing with our animation editor and what we can do with all that. So let's go ahead and hold, put a hold on that for just one moment. Um, and let's do our due diligence here. Let's turn this off. Let's call this BG. Let's move outside of this operator. Let's make sure that our panel is looking for something called dot slash bg. Great, wonderful, right? And we should still see this work here from the top. Ooh, that's just, it feels so pretty and fun. How could you not like it? So the next thing we're gonna start to play with is we're gonna start to play with uh, the timer chop a little bit. And we're not gonna dig too deep into this because there's about a thousand different directions you can go with it. But I do want us to kind of have a few ideas that we can start to kind of, uh, kind of meddle around with and start to think about a little bit. So let's go ahead and add a new container. And let's take a look inside of this container, land and home again. And let's start just by grabbing the timer chop. So the timer chop, not timeline, but timer, <laughs> right, is a wonderful little operator that lets us do all sorts of time-based kinds of triggers and events. So we've got an initial state, we've got a start, so we can actually run this thing. We get a timer fraction, we can see uh, that we'll get a pulse when it's done, when it's all landed. Boink, there it is lovely, excellent in every way. So while we're here, let's go ahead and grab an audio play chop, because we can use this audio play chop to actually trigger a sound. So when we see that uh, run, if you've got this connected, or actually the way this particular operator works is that you should trigger it and you should hear a lovely little bling chiming sound that comes out of it. All right, let's try that one more time. Great. Hopefully you hear that um, loud and clear. So how could I use my timer over here to trigger this thing over here? Well, we could do that a couple ways, right? So I can see here that an input on this is a trigger. I've also got a volume input. I've got a pan for left, right? So I might do something as simple as selecting out my done state, right? So I just want to grab done. And I just want to use done to trigger how this thing goes. Now that's not quite perfect, right? Because I need to return to my initialize, but we could start to think about how we can make this work. So we'd start this. This is going to count all the way up uh, to 10, right? And then it's going to fire this thing off. It's probably going to be like a little bit sassy. But that's an excellent way for us to start to think about how we might do something like this. All right, we could also, rather than creating something like this, let's go ahead and disconnect these. We might think instead about how we could use one of the callbacks that's associated over here, right, with our particular uh, timer to do some of that for us. Now, in here, let's go ahead and take a look at what that might mean. So my, I've got a, kind of just a ton of callbacks. I'm going to actually, yeah, well, let's start here. I've got a kind of tall back, ton of callbacks that happen here, right? So I can have scripts that will fire at any of these states, right? So when we initialize, when we're ready, when we start, when we pulse, while we're active, ay, 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 the list goes on and on. Let's start here with using done, right? So on done, I want to do a particular thing. So I would like the operator that's called audio play one, right? I want to look at the parameter called trigger, and I'd like to pulse it, right? And if we look over here, we can see there's this thing called trigger. So I want to, the parameter called trigger, this guy, I just want to pulse it, boink, perfect. Let's go ahead and turn down the length of this to something more like two seconds so we don't have to wait quite so long. And let's initialize this and start it. And we should see when this is done, we should fire over here. Lovely, that is just what we wanted to see. Now, there's another way that we might think about doing some of this, right? Because rather than having uh, this script kind of like tucked away in here, we might 
think about instead making a text stat, right? This is one of my favorite ways to do some of these things. And in here, I might write that script. So I want the operator audio play one, the parameter called trigger to pulse. And if I run this script, we can see that still works. Okay, so why all the fuss? Well, that means that what I can do over here is I can instead, and let's call this fire audio, A-U-D-I-O. So instead of all of this shenanigan, I can just say I would like the operator called fire audio to run, right? So operator fire, fire audio dot run which means I should, when I initialize this and start it, when we get to the end, we just fire off that particular script. Lovely, jubbly, right? That seems like a very, very simple kind of way of uh, starting with all of this, right? That's not too terribly exciting, but it does give us a bunch of different options um, in terms of starting to think about how we can manipulate and take advantage of some of these things, right? Okay, so if that's how we get started, um, how can we push this just like a little bit farther and a little bit harder? Okay, well, what if, uh, what if we did something a little bit more playful, right? Like, let's think instead about what that might mean. So, uh, we've got a number of different options that we might work with here. Um, let's we're actually going to, hmm, sure, we'll take this lovely thing and we'll just scoot it right on down here, right? Those two are just going to be, we're going to keep using them. I'm going to add another timer. And I'm going to think about some other way that I might work with a timer. So this time, let's go ahead and attach a trail. Now our first kind of run through this, right? And actually, while we're here, let's make this viewer active. And let's look at one graph per channel. There we go. Right, so now we can kind of see all these things separately. So we've got time refraction. We've got this ready state. We've got this done state. These are all really quite lovely. We like them uh, quite a bit. But what if instead, right, like let's um, play some different games here. Let's go ahead and come over here to our timer. And let's look at this thing called cycle. So I'm going to turn cycle on. I've got four cycles now. I'm going to turn the length of this down to say like mm, two seconds. And now what happens? Now let's initialize this and start it. And we can see that I run once, twice, three times, four times before I'm complete. And my outputs, I might make something uh, like my cycles, right? Let's make that viewer active or make not viewer active, but let's add that to our output here. So what happens now when we take a look at that? So if we run this, we can see that we're at cycle zero, or at cycle one, two, three, four. Okay, that's interesting, right? That's starting to get a little more fun. So what if we did something like this? Let's think about adding maybe a text dat here to our network. And while we're at it, let's add a text top to our network. Now, I would love, when we run this thing, to go ahead and have a different set of um, text show up here inside of this top, inside of this text top. And instead of a text dat, let's use a table dot. So what if we had something that looked like this? So we might make this viewer active, and let's add a couple rows here. And I want this to say something like, standby, three, two, one, and uh, last but not least, one more, go. Right, and as we complete each one of our passes through here, let's dump one of these values over here into our text. Okay, what, how might we think about that? So over here, right, let's notice that we've got this lovely callback, right, um, that's called on cycle. So on cycle, 
what do we want to do? So I'm going to go ahead and say that on cycle, I would like, right, for our operator text to dot par dot text. So the parameter called text, this bad boy, to be equal to the operator table one, this one right over here. And I'd like to extract out of table one, right? I want the row to co correspond to our cycle, and then I want us to be in the column zero. Okay, so what does that look like? Let's see what happens when we do that. Let's initialize this and start. So we go through, we get three, two, one, go. Excellent. Now we'll notice that our cycle zero, right? There's no kind of completion for cycle zero, so we don't get back there. So how could we fix that? Well, let's go ahead and think about what, how we might use this thing called uninitialize. So when we initialize our timer, now let's go ahead and borrow some of this text that we've already written. Copy, paste. So I want text to par text, right? I want the parameter called text to be equal to, rather than cycle, I just want it to be equal to what's in the zero, zero position, which is this thing, standby. So now when I initialize this, we fire off that script, we're in standby, we start, we've got three, two, one, go, right? We've got this lovely thing. Now, what happens if we've got another timer? It's timers inside of timers inside of timers, uh, right? So this timer is gonna count to five. And I want this timer to start once we get to the last cycle. So what we're going to use is we'll use on done. So when this thing completes, we want the operator called timer, and let's double check which timer number it is, timer three. So I'd like timer three and the parameter and I believe the parameter is just called start. Let's make sure. Yep, just start. So the parameter start to be pulsed. So let's pulse that when we're all the way done. Let's make sure that's going to work. So we'll initialize this and we'll start. And we should see at the end of our countdown that our timer three starts. Great, so now this timer is running. Our timer's going, going, going. When it's done, this little button goes off over here. That's great. We can go ahead and get rid of this. We're going to scoot this over here. And we can put this up someplace where we can see it a little bit better. OK, so now what I would really love to do is that when we get to the end of this, I would love to also go ahead and just initialize this timer. So we go for five seconds, and then we go back into standby. Right, so we've got some event that happens, and after it happens for five seconds, we return our whole system to its default state, ready to start all over. So in this case, on this timer, right, on timer three, when we're done, we're now going to take a look at timer two. So the operator, timer two, not 22, but just two, and the parameter called initialize, I, init. And we want to pulse that. Right, and let's, we can just um, start this. We'll see if that actually behaves. It should. Excellent. Now, because we've actually uh, used this timer over here, right, we've set a callback so that when this initializes, we set this to standby. That's wonderful, because now it means that we're kind of reset here. So let's start this. We'll start, we should count down, three, two, one, we get to the end of that, we go. This runs for its duration of five seconds, and then we go back to our standby. Oh, okay. So, so far so good. That's looking pretty jamming so far. Um, I like that an awful lot, but certainly we could push that a little bit more, and you bet your bottom dollar we can. So let's scoot this on over a little bit. We're going to add a button. 
out here. And I would like this button, right, to be, to have a few different states in it, right? Let's move inside here. Let's use the trick that we've already practiced where we can make our um, table here viewer active. We're going to add a view, uh, column after called text, right? And in the off position, this is standby running standby running. We'll use our very fancy trick of looking at the column four, and we're going to look at a row that corresponds for operator i, and we want to pull out of i state, and we want to add one to it. There we go. We can get rid of button as a text. We don't need to end that. All right, so let's go ahead and make this a little bit wider, maybe like 70. And now we've got this lovely thing, standby, running, standby. Okay. Whew. Excellent. That is a fine start to what we've got going on. So we've got this lovely thing happening. Let's go ahead and let's add a, well, let's do this. Let's use a chop execute. And what we want to do here in this chop, right, is that we want to look for button one, out one. So we're looking inside of here for this guy. And as we change from off to on, that's when we're going to fire off this particular script that we want to worry about. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So in off to on, let's call our timer T1. So T1 is the operator. And which timer is that? Let's make sure that it's this guy over here, timer two. So T1 is timer two. And we want, when we hit that on button, right, we want t1.par.start to get pulsed. There we go. t1.par.start, pulse. That's great. And now when we get to the end of this, when we return to standby, right, we're going to leave this in toggle mode. And what I also want to do on done is I want to find the operator button one, and I want to take its panel, right? And in panel, I want select to be equal to zero. Right, if we were to come all the way back over here and look inside, we can, oh, and I think it's, let's make sure that's correct. Oops. Not this guy. Right? It's state. So we want to change state, not select. All right. So we want the thing called state to be equal to zero. Okay, so why all of that business? Well, by forcing the state of our button to go back to zero, what's going to happen is that we'll see this thing running. We'll see our countdown, right? We'll see us run through all of these different things. We're going to go. And at the end of this, we'll then see this change back to standby. So now we've got this wonderful way that we uh, can start to think about how we return our systems back to default based off of just some scripts that are kind of cooking right along, just the way that we want them to. So let's look at one other application that we might use for this um, before we get going. Okay, so let's add one more text, excuse me, one more table dat here to the mix. And this time around, what we're going to do is we're going to use a timer chop. And we'll take this particular table, let's edit it. And I'm going to use a text editor to make this go like just a smidge faster. And I need two columns, one called length and one called text. I'm using tabs to make sure those are different. And the length of this is one. And it's going to say, hey, you, yeah, you, you're great. OK. So here we've got our length over on the one side. We've got our text over here in the next column. We're going to take this timer, and now we've got this lovely thing called segments. We're going to drop in our segment stat to that bad boy. We're going to add another text top 
out here. And now we just need to do a little bit more scripting. Now this feels like a ton of scripting, but I promise this is like, whew, so super wonderful. So when we initialize, um, I want to actually go ahead and set that text top to be blank. So here I want the operator called text2. And I'm, let's verify this is, oh, this is actually text1. I don't know how that became text1. Let's double check. Oh, that guy's text2 for some reason. How strange. Um, so this guy's text1, so I want the operator text1, and I want his parameter text to be equal to blank. So I can just put in uh, an empty space, right, inside of a string, so nothing goes in there. Now, every time we exit one of our segments, right, that's what we uh, set up over here is that we've got kind of segments that are specified. That's what this is all about. Right, so every time we, oops, I want to look at when we uh, exit a segment, this guy down here. Every time we exit a segment, I want to go ahead and do another operation. So I would like the operator text2 and the parameter called text to be equal to the operator. And we need to know what this guy's name is over here, table2. right? I want that to be equal to table2. And out of table2, I want to use our segment plus1. And I want to look at the column called text. Whew, geez, Matt, this seems like an awful lot of work. That's true. That's OK. Because what this should mean is that when we initialize this, we go to blank. And when we run this, as we go through each segment, we should see that work. And I must have missed something here. OK. Op text two dot par dot text. Aha! Because it's changing this one over here. Its name is text one. Let's fix that. So we want this to affect text one, not text two. There it is. OK. Now that's not quite big enough, but we might do some word wrap. Oof, we're just like just too small for that. That's OK. Let's turn our font down to maybe like 25. OK. Whew. So we've almost got this up and running here, right? Aha, we can see that I misspelled something here. L-E-N-G-T-H. Length should help specify that. Um, aha, good. Right, so our length is taken away here. And now our, the length of all of these things is specified by what's going on in this column. So we should initialize this. We should start it. We should see that we go one second increments. And it chugs its way right through this. Let's look at one other thing that would be useful for all of this, right? Which would be if we were to grab an info dot, we can get some information outside of this timer, right? So we can get a bunch of time code. That would be really useful. Let's change a few dimensions here. I'm going to make this maybe 400 by 300. I'm going to add one more text top here. That is also 400 by 300. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use uh, my info dot over here, right, on my text. Excellent. Let's go back over here. Let's get rid of this text. And what do I want? I actually want to go ahead and grab this running business. So that happens to be in column one, and it happens to be in row three. Wonderful. That text is like just a little bit too big for me. So let's turn it down to maybe like 11. How about 8? And then I'm going to translate it down here into the corner, right? So we can move its position all the way over here to the left. Yoink. And let's move it down to the bottom. Excellent, right? This is starting to feel like we might be recording something. OK, so the next thing we can do here, now that we've got this working, let's go ahead and composite these together, right? 
We'll composite. We're going to put this one on top, this one next. Let's go ahead and just add those, right? And we can get a null out of this. And if we set that to our background here, we can see that when we initialize this timer, we go to zero and then we start it, we get lovely little time code. And then we also get our segments that come out together. So this gives us some kind of foundational ideas in terms of how we can start to think about what the timer chop is good for, how we might take advantage of it, and the ways that we might exploit that to help set up systems that have kind of state-based operations that have some kind of time that's attached to them. All right, THP 494 and 598, it has been an excellent semester. Thank you so much for your time and patience, and I hope you enjoy the summer.